What is up, you guys? We are back in the Spark Studio with another episode of Investigating Innovation with the I2C. I'm your host, Madison Travis, and on today's episode, we're going to be spotlighting one of our mentors, Axel. We're going to be asking him about his professional career, what kind of advice he's received, and what kind of advice he would pass on to fellow entrepreneurs. Let's roll. Hey, Axel, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. We're super excited to have you in the Spark Studio today. Um, Axel is a mentor of ours, so we're going to be kind of picking his brain a little bit about uh, what advice he would give and kind of what his professional career has looked like, I guess. So um, I guess introduce yourself and kind of tell us a little bit about your your professional life, your specialty and all that. Absolutely. So yeah, no, it's a pleasure to be here to start with. I think, you know, just seeing the building and everything you have is a very, very cool place. So, so I'm excited to be here to start with and excited to have been um, the opportunity to become a mentor and, yeah. and help people here. But um, you know, when I think about my, my life and my career, uh, you know, life is an adventure, right? So, um, <laughs> True. Uh, as you probably see from my name and hear my accent, uh, I wasn't born in Kentucky. Uh, <laughs> so I, I grew up in Sweden and, um, so that's where I'm from. Um, and after my engineering degree, I got into medical devices as an engineer. And later I, I joined, um, a startup company. Um, called Plasma Circle, um, and that was a small company, about five people in, in Sweden at the time. But um, I was part of that company for about 10 years and grew to 100 people. And through that journey, you know, I, I become a manager and other things, but also ended up having manufacturing in, in several countries. And we built a manufacturing plant in Atlanta, Georgia. So, so that's how I ended up in the U.S. in, in 2011. Oh, okay. I would say that's a huge change from five to 100 people, too. So. Yeah. So when we talk about entrepreneurs and, and people that you have in, in your community and your, um, in, uh, around the incubator here, yeah. it's like, you know, I've been part of, of that, you know, going through that and seeing the growth pains and, yeah. and things, you know, that has happened. So that, that's, you know, a truly a journey uh, for me personally and professionally to do that. Oh, for sure. And there's such a change in like how business is conducted whenever you have five people who are running the show and then you have a hundred people who are there to help. I mean, there's yeah. such a drastic difference and oh, yeah. the growth is good, but sometimes it, it can be a little overwhelming and hard to navigate too. So, so con kind of continuing on that trail, my life's being an adventure. So <laughs> when I came to the U S um, as I said, I lived in Atlanta, Georgia for a few years. And that's where I met my wife. She's she's American. She's born and raised in Atlanta, and she was doing her PhD at Vanderbilt. So okay. after getting tired of driving back and forth between Nashville and, and Atlanta, I looked for an opportunity uh, in Nashville, and I also ended up uh, at um, at Vanderbilt, but at the tech transfer office, helping researchers that were involved in uh, medical device and other life science awesome. technologies to help them. You know, with my background experience, going through that journey to kind of help them. Um, on the pathway forward, whatever that meant for, yeah. for the company. So, yeah. um, so as a mentor, you know, I know you're kind of like just joining the team and getting involved with us here at the I2C. What is your like specialty? Like, you know, what, what is your specific area that you help entrepreneurs with? I would say primarily it is medical devices. So, okay. you know, um, I've been with several startups now, um, you know, to where, where I'm at today, following some other things after Vanderbilt, but you know, medical devices, is my specialty, uh, speci yeah. uh, speciality period. <laughs> um, but, and and um, to that end too, sometimes what I do say my speciality is my breadth combined with depth. So if you, if you kind of think about um, any stage from having an idea for a medical device to bring that into commercial distribution, all the different steps that you need to go through, in some shape or form, I've been involved in that hands-on. So I have practical experience from all the stages, from prototyping right. to, to develop the product, get into manufacturing, test right. it in different ways, get through the FDA, uh, reimbursement, and, and, and the yeah. whole nine yards. So, so yeah, medical device as a general area, and then, but pretty much anything within medical devices. Okay, awesome, awesome. That is a very um, it's niche, but also has a lot of a lot of aspects to it. So you you know, there's a there's a wide range of people you can help while also having a very niche, you know, little market to work with. Um, but that's super awesome. That's yeah. cool. Um, something that I do not know a lot about, uh, you know, I, that is one thing about being here. I've learned a lot about different areas that I would have never had the chance to really learn about unless I went out of my way to um, research these things because there's just so many different facets with the startup companies here and all the things that they're doing. Um, so how long have you been in this industry again? 
So, uh, yeah, uh, about 20 years. 20 years? Uh, yeah, okay. about 20 years. But, uh, uh-huh. The only thing I want to mention with that, though, that yeah. while, while medical devices is my area of, um, that I've specialized in, a lot of the things that you would do to bring some sort of technology to the market, mm-hmm. all different faces, is sort of like technology agnostic, if you will, that even though, um, meaning that whether it's a consumer product or a service, a lot of the things that you go through as a startup company and the things that you need to consider to be successful um, is sort of the same, no matter if it's a medical device or right. something else. So I think while I'm a, sort of my expertise lays within the medical device uh-huh. field, I think, you know, I've been mentoring companies that are, are not specifically medical devices okay. too. Okay. So. And, you know, with this being a, a tech startup incubator, I mean, like you mentioned, if those are all kind of going through the same steps, obviously you can be of help in some way. And honestly, I think any any of our mentors can help almost any of our entrepreneurs here, you know, even if you're not specifically um, necessarily addressed in that area um, of expertise. I think all, all of you guys have something to show for and something to, to help uh, uh, all of them with. So, um, so kind of going off that, you know, going off the mentoring subject, um, what kind of advice would you give to entrepreneurs? Like if you could sit down and kind of, write your own book about, you know, the, the advice, uh, I'm sure it would be forever long, but you know, kind of what, what are those few things that stick out whenever you're kind of trying to help entrepreneurs? What are those few pieces of advice? To pick one to start with that kind of, that I think stick out, which is sort of an area that I, that I really like myself is, is the, the side of planning. Um, I, I don't think I can under, uh, over, <laughs> overemphasize the importance of, of sort of Planning and and I don't mean so much that you need to spend all your time in building the most detailed plan that uh, you know the world has ever seen. It's more like to actually just have a plan because I see that a lot with early stage companies um, that you know they know that they need to do a lot of things to get this product or service to the market, um, and they have a general idea of where it needs to go, but it's. Um, often I see that hasn't really been anything put on paper and, and you know, something that's consolidated. Um, the reason why that's important is that, you know, on at least on a high level, have some sort of understanding where you want to go at least the next year. It's very important for, for the entire team to be uh, aligned of what needs to happen. And that will help you in several ways in communication with external stakeholders, for instance, like mentors, uh, but also investors and others that you know, if you do have a plan to some level that you're all united around and, and you have discussed why you want to do certain things, um, you will have a, a, a better a better position to to explain that to others, to get better help, but also get you know funding if you seek seek um, external funding for that. So, right. so so that's very important, I think, to just just have some sort of a plan and get together around that as a team. And, and you know, of course, things change all the time, especially in a startup, but at least you have a starting point and you can then, you know, look at where you were heading. And if, yeah. if an issue come up or an opportunity come up, you can decide if you need to pivot or if you can continue where you were planning to go. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, you mentioned the team aspect is really important too, because you have to be united around something. Because I think, um, I know Valentina Escaro, she's also a mentor. She was um, on one of my recent episodes and she was talking about, you know, how they, her and a partner had different visions. And, you know, it wasn't a bad thing, but that caused, you know, kind of parting of ways and, and just directions to completely change. And mm. so um, I think that's a really, a, a really key part of the planning. You know, it's not just you having an idea of, of where you're going, but also everyone, you know, kind of agreeing upon that mm. specific direction. I have mentioned this kind of before on here, but I haven't really thought about a lot of the entrepreneur aspects, even though I've been working here at the startup hub for over um, a year now. Um, I hadn't really thought about a lot of these, but I had an entrepreneurship class that really made me think about the the key aspects that you're really trying to look for whenever you're even, you know, thinking up an idea, you know, before you even get anything on paper or anything. Um, no, and, and it's important for uh, companies of all stages too. I mean, you know, yeah. um, but I think it's um, when you get, when you grow and get to, um, you know, further down the road, I guess, you know, more people are brought on board that may have that expertise to kind of help with building those type of plans. So that's why I think it's important to kind of, stress that because the thing is that too you know you, you all have to run in the same direction at the end of the day and sure. you need to be super focused and, and having a plan helps you prioritize 
also what you need to do next because right. there's so many things that you can work on as a <laughs> as a startup yeah. company entrepreneur so you kind of need to at least have some sort of a list and a plan for let's attack this first and and then we go to that because at the end of the day you know you have very limited funding you know you, you may have got right. a grant you may have friends and family pitch in maybe you have some angel seed funding mm -hmm. but you know when that money is out you know it's over right so right. you, you kind of have to do the best you can with the people and the money that you have to get you to the next uh to the next milestone which kind of will allow you as a company to raise more money yeah so that's why it's so important to have that plan you can forecast and kind of think about you know how different you know if you had a certain direction how that's going to impact where you're going to be next yeah and entrepreneurs you know you kind of touched on this entrepreneurs are always wanting to take on every project they can you know especially right there at the beginning they're eager to get involved so even if that's not necessarily in their scope of work or like what they've planned to do they want to take it on and hopefully build a client relationship and you know get the get the money get the sales get get some sort of growth going yeah. and so sometimes it can be damaging and something that is not beneficial so you know going back to your the original thing you said having a plan and seeing if that opportunity aligns with that or if you need to pivot and change things is super important you yeah. know and um, that's why mentors are around like you guys <laughs> uh to help them stay in that direction um with your professional career and you know all the years of experience you've had um i'm sure you've had a few mentors and you know authority figures along the way um what is some of the best advice that you've received in your professional career mm, yeah i've got a a few few ones that mm -hmm. are pretty good but i think the one that may be worth bringing up today which also actually ties back to what we just talked about it's, it's kind of to keep the focus. Um, and uh, you kind of said it right now yourself, but, um, you know, it, it's easy to uh, to have a technology that can do many different things and you want to do all of them, right? So, mm -hmm. um, which may make sense eventually. Right. But you need to kind of understand, uh, you know, what pathways you have and keep that focus. Um, kind of goes back to planning. But for instance, if you do have a technology, a product or service that can generate revenue in many different ways that you lay out the, the different ways that that can happen and you look at which one makes most sense for you as a company whether it's a maybe it's not the, the coolest the, the the one that's going to make give you a hundred million dollars right. but it may get you into the market faster to get you to revenue yeah um, and if you're in revenue you have an easier access to external capital so it's more kind of getting to that focus because uh, i've been I've been in that situation many, uh, several times myself in my career where you do have something that's really cool and you can do many different things and you want to do all of them. And then um, first off, you run out of bandwidth because you can't do everything. And then also when you get to the point where you pitch to investors, they are su super sensitive to that. They, they, they want you to really show focus because they, they are going to give you money um, to bring something to the market to make, to make them even more money. So for that, they need to see that, you know, your team is aligned, you have a plan, and then you're focused. So right. keeping the focus and just, you know, putting other things on the back burner, even though they may also be super cool and interesting and going to make you a lot of money, you just need to pick one and go with that. So this is kind of going off that. This is kind of a, a random question, I guess. But, um, you know, if you go to an investor and you're showing them the projects that you've worked on and they're really scattered, like they're kind of – you have a lot of experience and you've worked on a lot of different things, but they're kind of all over the place. Would you say that that is going to kind of diminish your, not reputation, but kind of like stain your image a little bit in the eye of the investor or kind of what would you think the investor would think about that? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's immediately a red flag. Okay. Uh, it may stop right there and then, and they say, yeah. it's not going to move forward unless you really have something that's like, you know, groundbreaking and that like super hot right. and, and they may just have oversight for, with that, which is very unique, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and, and also talking about that, the thing with investors, you know, they see the deal flow they have is like ridiculous, you know, they can get maybe 20 pitch decks a day of new possibilities to invest in. So, yeah, yeah. so for them, it's, it's easier to say no than it is to oh, say yes. Sure, so if you sure. show up and, and you don't have your ducks in a row and you're scattered <laughs> and you want to change everything in the world, you're not going to get an investment. Right. Um, well, I really enjoy getting to talk about the focus and like the importance of really planning and being um, being niche about what you're trying to do, honestly, because, you know, if you're trying to do everything, then that means everyone else can probably do it, too. So um, thank you so much for all of your insight and your advice. Um, I'm sure that uh, people will really get to enjoy hearing uh, your word about this. And <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for coming on.
And that is all for today's episode, you guys. I hope that hearing more about Axel's experience and his advice made you realize how important it is to have a plan and stay focused when you're starting your own company. Be on the lookout for who I'm going to interview next. In the meantime, make sure you're following us on all of our socials at UAHI2C on Instagram and UAH Invention to Innovation Center on Facebook. Onward and upward.